Welcome back to Lightscribe.tv. In this video I'm going to run through the answer to the question that I've been asked most of all, which is how do I make my Lightscribe labels darker? Now there are three things you need to do, and here they are. First off, you need to make sure you have the correct um, contrast adjustment in the Lightscribe control panel. I've shown you how to do this in a previous video when we installed the system software, but I wanted this in this video as well, so all the procedures and all the steps are in one place. Second thing is to possibly, you don't always need to do this, but adjust the contrast, image and brightness of your Im images you're going to use on your labels. And the third thing is multiple burns, and we'll discuss that afterwards as well. So getting rid of that, if we open the control panel, now when you first open this, as I've said in the other video, your radio button here will be um, ticked or highlighted and you will need, this won't say this, but as I've been using this obviously and done the adjustment, my contrast settings are set to enhanced. Now that's what you want, so if you're in the situation where you've just installed the system software, make sure the other radio button is um, um, highlighted and click apply and OK. That's all you need to do with that. but alongside that I just want to show you a little graphic to just sort of describe what's happening here as we do these things um, the this step of the control panel and the next step with um, the software itself what you end up doing is you increase the contrast you go you know left uh, sort of right to left really on the on the diagram the contrast gets better However, the I was going to say payback. It's not really payback. The, the the compromise is that the better the contrast, the longer the labelling will take. And nothing shows this more to be the case than when you actually do this with the software itself. So if I go into the template labeler as an example, this will show you. Let's just pull it within the boundaries of the frame. It doesn't matter what software you're using, all Lightscribe software will give you these options. So I'm not going to bother editing, I just want to go straight to the print. Now, contrast level, here we are, and we have draft, and yeah, it's a graphic representation, but as you see, as I change these, it gets a bit darker, and the final one is best, which is the default, by the way. Don't change it, is what I'm going to say. The sacrifice is you take longer to do your labeling. Um, let's just go back, uh, 23 minutes as opposed to 29, and draft is 17 minutes. Well, sure, you have to sit around waiting, doing something else, go make a cup of tea in my case, because I drink a lot of tea. Um, but that being the case, the result is a much better label. So always leave that on best. Um, it sort of goes without saying for most people, but I just want to make sure that everyone realises that we're here to increase the contrast to get the best label we can. So, going back to our little thing, that's the Lightscribe control panel and also software itself. So you've adjusted your um, software, if you like now, to give you the optimum label. So what's next? Well, the next thing is checking out the images you're going to use and um, see what we can do with them. So, as they say on the thing, on the programs, um, here's one I prepared earlier. So I, it's an image I use on my sites um, to illustrate this, but I've um, broken them all down so I can do the, the process in front of you so you can see exactly what I do. Now, what this was, I was actually testing um, and various things with Lightscribe at the time, but one of the things was taking a number of photos um, back in the day, before I actually um, had a digital camera and printed, had the prints made and then just arranged them and made a label out of them. Now when I first did that, I had to then, once I put them on a, on a sheet of black paper as you can see, I then took a picture of that, um, um, what am I saying, um, of that entire collage of pictures and um, then created a label from it. Now, the next image I'm going to show you is a picture of this plus the label that came from it. And that's the collage of pictures, and this 
is the image that came from it. Now, as you can see, the the contrast is a little bit wishy-washy. I mean, up close it looks a bit better than that, or looked a bit better than that, I should say, but it's still it's not ideal. So I then played around for quite a while, adjusting the settings um, to try and get a better picture here, to produce a better label here. And this is what I ended up with. And as you see, um, much sharper. Um, it's a wholly better label. There is a, you know, again, payoffs, you know, sacrifice, whatever you want to call it, where in some of the dark areas you lose a bit of the definition, um, but overall it's a much better label. So how did I go from that one to that one? Well, let's show you. If I open up um, the program I use, I was looking behind my microphone to see where the icon is. The program I use is Fireworks. Now, most people don't use Fireworks. They'll either use Photoshop or another program. Um, I've been using Fireworks, well, I would say 15 years. It feels like forever. And I've never really converted into Photoshop. I should do because more people use it and PSD files are far more readily available. Um, I use Photoshop where I have to, but I much prefer Fireworks. So excuses aside, that's what I'm doing. Now, what I'm going to do is open um, the background photo. Now, because it's an 800 square and I can't put all that in this particular window, I'm just going to reduce it. Now, having said, what I'm going to show you here is really the, what I do. Um, and in the program you'll be using, if it's not fireworks, then um, you'll find a way of um, doing the same thing. So in this case, filters, adjust color, brightness and contrast. Now, if I just pop that over there, so it's slightly out of the way. What I'm going to do here, what I found optimal for this particular image, won't be the same for yours. Needless to say, you will adjust yours to get the best. Um, it's a trial and error process. But for this one, I found increase, or sorry, decreasing the brightness, because as you can see, it's a bit bright, it's a bit washy, um, by minus 20. Um, that improved matters. And then, there you are, that's taken it a stage, one stage, it looks pretty good. But you increase the contrast, and so I'll put that in there, that pulls it right back. And for me, that is, the optimum for light scribe printing. I get good definition, good resolution, um, and sharp images. So that's what I would be using. Oh, OK, file, save as, um, contrast images, and I'm going to call that um, 3 photo, because then I can show you the difference. 3, save, and file, open, recent. There we are, so we go to this, and there's the difference. Okay, so much sharper, and that is what gave us that as a contrast um, label. So there we are, that's adjust our image brightness and contrast. Now that was a background, I used that as a background to my label. You can do the same thing obviously with individual images and photos that you'll be adding to your labels. Um, process is obviously exactly the same. So now we're on to number three, multiple burns. Now I'm sure you will have realized this by now, but if not, let's open the template labeler again. It does refuse to open smaller. When you get the, uh, really I could have not bothered with that because all I want is this. Underneath the contrast level you get copies up to 99 which if you really want to do that many, good luck. Um, but here's the next thing. There are some times where you can adjust the images, you can well, you can do all sorts of things like that, and you make sure your um, control panel and your software is set to you know, best and enhanced, and still you're not happy. 
Now, the times this will happen more than anything else, any other time is when you're using DVDs. I do not understand the reason in as much as why they do it, but the DV, the layers of the light scribe coating, the gold coating on the light scribe disc on a CD is thinner than it is on a DVD. I do not understand why this is the case, but it is. The consequence of this is that it actually doesn't burn as dark because it just doesn't burn into the thickness the same. I'm not sure exactly why it even does that, why it creates a lighter label, but the, the upshot is that's what happens. So although you may create a label on a, for a CD that is perfectly adequate, in fact, great, when you come to print the same label on a DVD, it actually looks less clear, less contrast. So here, I so say you can get this on CDs as well, but DVDs particularly. Increase your copies to two, and sometimes, believe it or not, you might need three. What will happen, again, I'm not sure if you realize this, but what will happen is the software will burn the first label, and when it says copies, it thinks you want another disc done the same, not the same disc done twice. So it will usually open the CD um, DVD writer drawer and pop out your nicely finished um, light scribe label. What you do is just close the drawer again with it in there, don't worry about it. Well, obviously check to see if you're happy. If you're happy, take it out. If you're not happy, leave it, put it back. And and then treat it like you put, the, or should I say the software will treat it like you put another CD in or DVD in. And then just carry on print again and it will print the next copy over the top of the previous one. And rest assured, it will print it exactly over the top of the other one. That's what part of the uh, um, function of the data ring in the middle is, is to line up the, the um, image or line up everything that's on the label with the label. So it will um, do an exact um, um, copy on top. So there won't be any blurring is what I'm trying to say. So don't worry about that. So that may be, if you like, the last resort. And it sort of is really because you don't want to be writing another 29 minutes. Um, for one label. So you could be looking at the best part of an hour to get one label. Not an ideal situation, but these are the things you may have to do under certain circumstances to get a label you're really happy with. And at the end of the day, that's what we want, isn't it? So that's all, if you like, all boxes ticked. Um, and I know this is possibly not the place to, to uh, mention this, but I'm going to pop it in anyway because it's to do with you know the 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 um, what the labels look like is once you've got a light scribe label, keep them in the dark. Now, this is something people may or may not realise, or make the connection, I should say, and that is that obviously um, what created a light scribe label or the light scribe label you have is the laser in your DVD writer, um, and that uses light. So. The, the medium, the coating, is burned with the light. Unfortunately, the flip side of that coin is that light will also fade the label. So if you were to do a light, and many people, many, many people have experienced this, where they've created a great label, they put it in a, a transparent CD, DVD, well, not so much DVD covers, but a transparent CD cover, and left it lying around, and within a few weeks, they found that it's sort of reduced by 50% the, um, the the visibility of the label. It's frustrating, um, and the way to avoid it is to always put them, you know, in the dark, in a box, on a shelf, next to something else, so light isn't actually getting on the label. However, one thing you can obviously do, as mentioned regarding the multiple burn thing, is that if you keep each um, a copy of each of your labels, um, the, the um, can't think of what the word is, but the, um, the file that generates that particular label, let's just, let's get rid of this and 
let's use our template label as an example. If you keep a copy, because once you've done all this, you've got this and you've gone on to this. Now it's, you can save it, you can save it as, and then you can save um, desktop, but you can save the label. So you're saving the label. So once you've saved the label, um, you can then open it again. So the point I'm trying to make here, long winded, but I'm trying to make is that if you do find six months, a year down the line, you've got a label that's faded, you can reburn that label as long as you have the original um, label file. So not all is not lost, but you don't really want to go to the trouble of it. Particularly, as someone said to me the other day, they were doing some labels for um, for a family member and they wanted to send them to them. So I said, you know, attach to the labels a little piece of advice, keep them in the dark, because if someone else has got the labels and not have and does not have access to um, light scrub equipment, then they're not going to be able to reburn them. And you don't want people, well, just imagine people sending labels backwards and forwards to get them reburned. Terrible. Anyway, so finally, oh, excuse me, voice is going. Finally, um, we've adjusted the control panel, we've adjusted the contrast and brightness, and we decided whether we need to burn the label more than once. And they're the three things you need to do to get the best LightScribe label you possibly can. Thanks very much. See you in the next video.